Welcome Clarity Coders. Glad to be back. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can automate mobile apps or games using Python. The technique I'm going to use uses a powerful computer vision library called OpenCV to create an AI to play the game of ZigZag. Now this game is extremely easy. You just tap the screen to change the ball's direction and try to stay on the track. With my human skills, I'm able to score around 50 points. It's actually really hard. However, there are a bunch of trophies that I'd like to accomplish. One, which is an ultra rare trophy that only 0.5% of people have accomplished. And that's a thousand point game. Now, following this video, I'm going to release a detailed series on how to use all the functions in OpenCV to create your own AI. It's all going to be free and posted on YouTube. So please subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. So first things first, like always, all the code is below for you to download for this completed project. Go ahead and grab that if you haven't already. I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of setup because I do it a little differently than some other people that automate Android apps and games and things of that nature. Now, one of the things you'll notice right away with other people doing this, like Engineer Man, is the code that they're doing is too slow to actually play real-time games. Now, the game that we're gonna be playing has to be fast enough to work in real time. So the first thing we're gonna do setup-wise is we're going to use an emulator. I'm doing that for a couple reasons. The main reason is you could hook up your phone over USB, but some some of you don't have an Android phone. The emulator that I'm going to use is LD Player. I'm not tied to that in any way. You can use whatever emulator you would like to use. You'll notice it comes with some apps pre-installed on it. Don't judge me for those. I don't recommend them in any way. They're just what comes installed on the player. From here, we can open up system apps, go to the Play Store and download whatever we would like. Now you're gonna have to down uh, sign up for a Google account, but that's all free. So you can go through that. We're just gonna search for ZigZag and install that game. Now that we've got the game installed, we can go ahead and open it up. You can see it gives us a nice little player shaped like a phone. I'm gonna resize this just a bit. Good Lord, that ad scared me, so watch your volume. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and kill my volume so I don't my pants here. Okay, that had an ad and then kind of died out on us. Let's try and open it again. Cool, you can see we got our zigzag set up now. Now, the thing that I did to set this up is I kind of put it in the top right corner. It just has to be sort of in the same location each time when we're grabbing screen grabs and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be exact. When we take a look at this, we can see that the game's exactly what we expected. So we're going to start off moving right. When we click, we change to left and we get our best score each time. We hit retry and we can play again. You also notice that there's a store where you can buy things with your rewards that you get in games when you collect the diamonds. So we're gonna unlock all those as well during this video. And then of course, the trophies. If you click on the trophy, you can see all the achievements that we have to unlock. And we're gonna try and accomplish all that in this video. So how do we start the process of adding AI to this program? The most important thing or the thing we have to worry about first is our ball on the track. How do we know where the ball is and how close it is to the edge of the screen? OpenCV makes this really easy. It has a module called Hue Circles. So we're gonna pull in our screenshot into our program. It's gonna turn it into an array of numbers and then we're gonna pass it into the hue circle function. You can see here that it's found the ball on the screen. Now that's gonna pass us back some information. It's gonna pass us back the ball's X location, the Y location, and the radius of the ball itself. So now we can track where it's going on the screen. Now, obviously we're not making any decisions yet because we have no idea where the edges are or anything like that. But you can see here as it plays through, it can see where the ball is at all times. Now our next step is, how do we find the edges of the track itself? You haven't seen it yet, but you'll notice a couple of things. One, when you hit the diamonds, they explode in a cloud that can kinda cause a little distraction there in different colors. And also, once we get so far into the game, the game colors begin to change as well. So we can't simply test for a pixel value and then click when we hit a pixel value or anything like that, because we don't know what the next color will be. So we can bring in another OpenCV function. This is called hue lines. All these functions have a lot of different parameters and to find the exact parameters you need, 
you really have to dial them in. And I'm gonna show you a program that I use later to find these exact values that's available in the GitHub, of course. Let's look at what it looks like when we pull in the hue lines into this program. So now what we can do is we can use our balls location and test to see how close it is to a red line. Now, if we're moving to the right, we only wanna look for the right edge of the track. If we're moving to the left, we only want to look for the left edge of the track. So as our ball progresses through this simulation, we're painting these lines constantly. Now I'm gonna slow down this video a little bit at this point, just so it's not too flashy. The lines kind of jump around. But you can see here that it paints the lines as we go throughout the simulation. Now one thing you might have noticed, and that I alluded to earlier, is if you look at this picture, it's making some mistakes, right? You can see that the two in the vision up in the top right corner, it thinks there's a circle there. So doesn't that throw off our calculations? Yes, it does. So what we wanted to do was limit the area of where it looks for the ball. So what I did is I picked out the X and Y coordinate that was close to being around the ball, and I only look for circles in that area. So therefore, I'm gonna ignore the two and things like that. Now with the edges here, you'll notice it's doing actually a really good job of finding just the edges. And you may be very curious why it's not finding edges on things like the diamond. That was another workaround we had to do. We actually had to mask that specific color out. So one thing we did with our program to accomplish these things is we look at a very small window. So this is all our programs actually seeing, this tiny view right here. Now you'll see we also eliminated the diamonds. So if you look at this next small picture here, we put a mask based on color to mask out the diamonds color itself so that our image doesn't see it. Then we took just the line of the program. So we eliminated the diamond already and then turned everything into line values. And then we drew the edges based on that. So you'll see here these white lines are the only thing our program sees. So we're really simplifying what's put into our program. Now, of course, for our view, I made it a little bigger window so you can kind of visualize what's happening. But for the computer's view, we want to keep it as simplistic as possible. Now, you may ask yourself again, how did I come up with these values? I'm throwing around a lot of numbers and different things like that. I created a little program called line detection in the GitHub that you'll find where we can adjust values with these sliders. So if you notice the mask, for example, I have a lower hue, a lower saturation and a lower vibrance something or brightness what's the v stand for in hsv anyways you can adjust those so if we want to increase them we can lower the hue lower the saturation and lower the vibrance or whatever it is and you'll see that our mask starts to increase in size and if i keep pulling these down eventually we're gonna mask out everything. Now you can see now our program doesn't see anything at all. So it's finding that balance. And if we go the other way and we don't mask out anything, so if we turn up these all the way, you'll notice that our mask is nothing. Now what you see here is you'll notice that diamond is back in there and you'll see on our image, there's a red line on the diamond. Now, if we hit that, it's gonna throw us off the track. So that's how we had to dial in these values. You'll notice there's also some a hue threshold, um, a minimum line size, a, min, a maximum gap and different things like that. That will cause different things to happen when I play with those. You'll see we get more or less lines, but the program, is going to allow you to dial in those values pretty easily by just playing around. Now the line detection program, you can actually open multiple images at one time so you can look at a lot of different things at once. We also had to pick a value of how far to the right or left we wanted to test for an edge. I settled at around 38 pixels. That was something that I played around with as well. Now once we have this all put together, we can actually test our program. Now as you can see, we're feeding data through our program constantly. It's finding the edges. Now you'll notice a lot of times some of the edges go missing on the program itself. So what we did to combat that is every time we, we actually did a check for a white value as well. You can see that there's pure white sometimes on the side of the track. We check for that and we also click if we hit that white value. As it keeps progressing, you can see that the colors continue to change on the map itself. But that isn't really a problem because we're not worried about the colors at all. The hue lines are performed with a grayscale image. So I actually use this chunk of code to grayscale the image before I pass it through that hue lines function. You'll notice here that it simply tears through the map. Now, of course, this didn't happen right away. This had, I had to do a lot of testing, 
to find the exact values that worked well with this track. But I can assure you that I did not do this myself because I don't have that ability. And you'll notice we gave it a look ahead value of 38 between starting at 20 pixels away and ending at 38. So it has some time to find that line if it misses it initially. You'll notice sometimes the edge is missing on an image, but maybe the exact next frame it's back. Now that a thousand point trophy was the hardest. There's a couple other lower values and there's also a thousand game one if you played a thousand games. I did that by simply automating this to play all night long and it actually, I left it on for like two days on accident and it played over 5,000 games. <laughs> now, obviously you can recreate this from what I've shown you here today and I hope that someone does. If you thought this video was cool, please let me know any other games you'd like to see me try and top the leaderboards on. If you really liked this program, but you don't fully understand OpenCV and you really want an in-depth description of how I did everything, you can, you can go to the GitHub and download it, but you might not understand the code exactly if you're not familiar with OpenCV. I am going to release a full course going over in-depth how I break down these OpenCV functions and how they work on a multitude of different projects. If you want to be a part of that course, it's absolutely free. All you have to do is subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out. And I will post that within a couple of weeks, the first iterations of that. If you have any questions or you want to get started or you want to talk to me or the people that I hang around with, the other coders I hang around, join the Discord. The link will be in the description below. We have people on 24 seven all over the world. So you can get the help you need, whether that's downloading this code, how to get started, how to install Python, whatever it is, we've got your back in that group. Join ahead, like I said, if you haven't. And until next time, keep coding.